And tonight's Eco 9 report takes us to the Tri Delphia Reservoir, where a curious local drone pilot pursuing his passion captured some really interesting images. Yeah, Tim Press, who lives in Olney, Maryland, posted some of these videos to Twitter recently. It's historic ruins that have been exposed by low water at Tri Delphia Reservoir, which has been drawn down, yeah, to a sediment control dredging project. Yeah, and that's where our Scott Broom uh, picks up the story from here. He's asking, what else has that water been covering up since the middle of the last century? And he got a little help from a 93-year-old resident who can tell you all about it. They drew down the water level here at Tridelphia Reservoir, and they exposed history. There are the stones. Tim Pruss is a drone pilot who likes exploring from the sky. I don't know what that is, whether it's a graveyard or... It, it looked like the foundation of a building. Yvette is his wife. I don't know what it was exactly. They have rediscovered remnants of a valley community dating back to colonial times, like the foundations of this house and possibly grave markers. It's something that had a purpose. These are the ruins on the bottom of Tridelphia Lake that include the factory mill town of Tridelphia, founded in 1806, which gave the reservoir its name. All of it was flooded when the Brighton Dam was built during World War II. As I flew over the one area, that's when I realized there was a, a good foundation there. It was an, an older structure. I don't know if it was part of the mill or if it was someone's house. The Washington Suburban Sanitary Commission has dropped the lake level dramatically to conduct a two-year sediment control project. Press's drone reveals the past. I mean, I think it's neat. It's, it's untouched. It's really important to document. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Dr. Stephen Curtis has written an 86-page local history of Tridelphia, a mill town founded by Quakers that was abandoned after catastrophic flooding decades before the reservoir came. Curtis, an archaeologist, documented a lot of it during a previous drawdown in 2017. It gives you an idea of what things were here in the, in the earlier colonial period. It's fun to think about what their lives were back then. Oh, it was a farm. That was a farm. With and that is where 93-year-old Ramus Lyles comes in with some perspective. And uh, I worked down there with a boy riding a horse, pulling hauling in hay and stuff. Lyle said he's a descendant of slaves brought to a Howard County farm 300 years ago. That dam took a lot and um, lots and lots of black people's land. He has lived and worked in the valley of his ancestors his entire life before anyone even thought about damming it up. This was a dirt road through here. And then after they did. Lyles went to work for the WSSC in 1961. And they had to build some kind of dam so they can build up a reservoir so they could pump water to these places. But there's other work that had to be done too. So well. Dr. Curtis wanted to know, do any of the stones exposed by the drawdown mark the graves of enslaved ancestors who might have worked at the mill in Tridelphia? It, it's, it's slaves up there, but I don't know you know exactly who, where they were buried. Lyle's memory was. fills in other more contemporary details, the family names of those who farmed the valley before it was flooded, the historic old roads, and memories of toiling next to German POWs held at Fort Meade during World War II. They drafted most all the young men around here for the mm -hmm. service. So the farmers had nobody okay. to work on the phone. Press's drone flights posted to Twitter bring the memories of the lost valley of Tridelphia flooding back, at least until the WSSC finishes its sediment control work and covers it all up with water again, perhaps as early as next year. At Tridelphia Reservoir, Scott Broom, WUSA 9.